Hello. What an honor and blessing it is to be here today. Uh, an honor to speak on behalf of the spirit of water, to come in greater communion and understanding with that sacred element and our most precious resource. Thank you for joining. You have a cup of water. I invite you to bring it in front of yourself so we can say a little prayer. Knowing that water is the container of all vibration, of all messages, of all wisdom, of all knowledge contained on the planet, the history of Earth. It makes up our physical being and each prayer and each intention and each song that we share is carried by the water. And as we drink that water, that intention and that prayer and that vibration becomes part of our physical being, altering the way our DNA forms, altering the way our proteins are, synth are synthesized and bend, changes our perspectives, changes our emotionality, really allows us to be who we want to be truly. So we take this cup and we give honor and respect to the spirit of the water, to the element of change, to the aspect that provides us our emotionality, our emotion, our energy in motion. And we know that when it flows as the water does, then we can remain vibrant and healthy. And that any energy that is not, that is stored within our bodies can be transmuted and moved out through our waters. We give thanks for the wisdom that water provides, for knowing that what is when we surrender and we go with the flow that we have the ability to carve through rock. And that with our persistence through surrender, that we have the ability to change our lives and the lives of those around us. We give thanks for the remembrance that to be fluid allows us to be in the flow state and truly be who we are. We give thanks for all the vitality that you provide. Thank you, sacred water, for giving us life, for providing us the wisdom and the guidance along the path, and for washing away all that no longer serves us. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your medicine. Thank you for your medicine. My intention for today is to stay grounded and present with an attitude of gratitude through actions of love. And so it is. Mm. Yum. Thank you. Once again, I'm James. And I'm Christelle. Together, we're the Watering Hole. We're an international holistic health hub focused on water adv advocacy and abdication to inspire sustainable self care through, creative, through creativity and education to inspire communities and bring everyone into a more holistic whole to rekindle the spirit and our connection with water in order to deepen our understanding of ourselves and how to be at one with nature. Uh, this is part three of what are you waiting for? Uh, knowledge shares, discussions, and we'll get started here picking up where we left off last time. Uh, 
and we're still getting used to the sacred technology. So hopefully the uh, screen is being shared currently. And so last time we left off on water having memory. Now water is the carrier of all the vibration and that, that vibration is displayed in the water crystals and the water cluster formations that occur with all of the each individual water molecules being changed in and out of the water clusters and a very, very rapid fashion, many, many times per second. Uh, but the super cluster, the architecture, the scaffolding of these clusters remain. And here are some lovely crystal images that are present that have been uh, studied and identified by the University of California Davis Hydrology Institute for Theoretical Dynamics. Um, Dr. Masaru Moto, as we mentioned last time, uh, has done some really beautiful work with studying uh, the crystal images in water and all the different vibrations that water can hold. So each of these words that were presented or songs that were presented or photos that were presented to the water uh, were then frozen and as the water melted uh, under a microscope, these crystal formations appeared and were photographed. And it shows that water with positive vibrations uh, through the form of words, symbols, songs, intentions, photographs, um, as long as they're carrying a message of positivity and beauty, uh, that is being reflected into the water and the water is picking up on its hexagonal uh, symmetry, the six-sided symmetry that forms these beautiful crystals. Uh, Dr. Masaru Moto's work can be uh, viewed online. Uh, he also has written uh, some lovely books as well, uh, one of which is right here. It's, the, it's called The uh, Hidden Messages in Water. I realize my video is off, so you probably can't see that. That's okay. Uh, I'll show it at the end. It's a really wonderful book showing um, all of Dr. Masaru Moto's wonderful work. Uh, Dr. Masaramoto is no longer with us, may he rest in peace. But he did some really beautiful work showing how water contains memory and it's the carrier of the vibration and this vibration remains. And even if you filter out all the things in the water, uh, the vibration of whatever was in the water still remains. So we need to do something about changing uh, the, the physics of the water, the structure of the water. The water structure is so important. And so in the last video, we went over quite a bit on the structure of water, uh, what exclusion zone water is, how that's considered to be structured water, how it creates uh, hexagonal symmetry into a liquid crystalline matrix within the water, and how that's so important because nearly all of the water that's contained in bodies and healthy bodies is in this uh, hexagonal symmetry, this six-sided symmetry and creates honeycomb sheets that are stacked on top of each other and support the, the life-giving nature within our cells and within every, uh, within every body. So as seen on the previous slides, what creates structured water? Uh, this is one of the questions I, that we receive quite often. And as seen on the previous slide, you can add, uh, sing to your water through music, you can play it music, uh, if you play an instrument, you can play that to your, to your water as well. Uh, or you can just pick out a favorite song and play that. You can write symbols or put images on the side of your glass uh, that's containing your water. This would be peace signs or the ohm symbol or the flower of life that we have is incorporated as part of our uh, logo here. Um, all of these will have a profound impact. You can also write words uh, such as love or gratitude. Uh, ascension, wisdom, well-being, peace, these types of words uh, have a very profound impact on structuring the water. Uh, so that's a really beautiful way. Uh, it's highly suggested that you, you can easily incorporate this at home just by with, with printing out photos or taking favorite photos out of magazines and putting them next to your water, pictures of, you know, dolphins or nature scenes, these types of things. Um, this is a very effective way. 
another way to create structured water is by using natural flow patterns. Phi ratios, that Fibonacci sequence, uh, which is so prevalent throughout nature. Uh, this is a great way to structure water. You can use uh, vortexes, so that's just spinning the water uh, around so that it creates this double helix vortex. Uh, that's very effective. There's uh, technologies available for this. Um, one of the things that makes waterfalls and fast flowing rivers and natural springs off mountains so such a potent form of water structuring and bringing that high energy and softness back into the water is because of the vortexing action. So as water goes over the fall and it comes in the bottom, it's constantly creating millions and millions of these uh, vortexes, which are spinning the water and then the centripetal inward spiraling force of the uh, those vortexes are changing the shape of the water. It's resetting the memory, uh, allowing it to come back into its most life-giving state. Also at the center of every single river uh, is, is a spiral, a vortexing spiral that uh, is doing the same thing. And so natural flow patterns with vortexes, cycling and spinning the water is a very, very effective way to restructure your water and create exclusion zone, highly living hexagonal water. Another beautiful way is the, through light treatment. So many of us have been to infrared saunas and infrared light, uh, that spectrum of light specifically, is very highly energizing to water. And what they found, thanks to Dr. Gerald Pollack's work with the fourth phase of water, is when you take a thin membrane uh, that is attracting water, so it's a hydrophilic, uh, hydrophilic surface, and you expose, put that into water and then expose it to infrared light. Uh, the water starts moving along that surface, that water-loving surface, and so it starts creating movement within the water, and so the water starts spiraling and moving itself, and as we know, water that moves is full of energy and stagnant water just grows bacteria and invites in mosquitoes and um, these types of things. So a really effective way is to expose your body and or the water that you drink to the uh, far infrared or near infrared spectrum of light. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is that why, you know, I think of the ocean and the ocean's always in motion and the ocean is obviously always in connection with the sun. And is the sun considered infrared spectrum? Yeah, the sun creates the full spectrum of, of visible light and infrared light, ultraviolet light. It also, it puts off a full spectrum. So almost the entire electromagnetic spectrum is being put off by the sun. And so is that also why the, the ocean is able to generate so much energy? Because there's this hydrophilic, water yes yeah there's a lot of hydrophilic surfaces within the ocean uh, that's a complex question and uh, it's still not fully understood how the 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 you know what is the nature of tides and what is the nature of, of the ocean movements and what is it that is limiting man's capacity to get into the center of the ocean we've done more exploration of our moon and of our nearby planets and solar system than we have our own ocean mm. And so what is it that's keeping us from exploring? It's, is it the lack of technology? Is it the lack of understanding? Is it because there's something down there that we don't know? Uh, this is yet to be under, fully understood. But there's a, many components going into the movements of the oceans. One is just simply that our Earth is rotating, you know, every, every 24 hours, give or take, uh, a few minutes. The Earth is spinning around on its axis. And so that's creating a motion, which is carrying the tides of the ocean. Um, the sun is also every 365 and a quarter days or so uh, every year. It's circling around the sun. So it's in an orbit of that. We're also in part of our Milky Way galaxy. We're kind of off um, towards the end of one of the arms of the, of the star of the Milky Way galaxy. And so around every 26,000 years, give or take, we're making a full complete cycle around the center of our galaxy. So that's creating more motion, which is contributing to the oceans. 
And then of course you have the phases of the moon. And so the different magnetic effects of the phases of the moon are pulling and pushing on the water as well. Uh, then you have the different temperature changes. So as the sun heats up the water in the ocean, um, that's being carried off and then it's mixing with cooler water that's underneath. And so that's creating more spiraling. And so there's a lot of factors that are going into the motion of the ocean. And so it's, it's rather difficult to pick one of the factors and put it in isolation and saying this is the effect it's having because there's so many factors, and even more, more than I had mentioned that are going into the, the motion of the ocean. So the Earth is pretty much a vortex yeah. on her own. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, from my understanding, the, the, the Earth is built as a natural uh, torus. So it has two vortexes coming in through the North Pole and coming out and in through the South Pole with uh, electromagnetic energy circling around from the pole to pole. And that's what allows a compasses to work. It's this uh, electromagnetic energy. And so the way that the energy and magnetic lines come uh, into and out of the North and the South Pole uh, does create a natural vortexing of magnetic electromagnetic energy around the planet. Oh, wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, light treatments. Infrared spectrum light, super great. Definitely worthwhile to go into infrared saunas and or get an infrared light that you can put on your water or they even have infrared uh, lights that, you, that are plates that you can put on top of the water and are constantly giving off that infrared spectrum light into the water. Um, another huge area is color therapy. So you can take different colored gels. This is, you know, can it be anything from a thin color a colored piece of cloth that you wrap around your water vessel. Uh, you can take um, colored plastics, not that I condone the use of plastics, uh, or you can put a, you know, the, a type of gel similar to how they would use in a theater to, to change the color of light. You can put that over your water bottles or your whatever water vessel you're having. Um, and each individual color is gonna have a different effect. And this is kind of a, a, a whole lesson in and of itself is all the different colors and different therapies that they could have. You know, even the color red, like the shirt that I'm wearing today, um, all the different hues and shades and contrasts within the color of red will each have a very different effect on the water. And as it's being drinking, uh, it will have a very profound effect on whatever's drinking or using that water. And so it's a fun thing to experiment with, or if you want to do some further uh, education and research into the different color therapies, I would highly recommend doing that. Uh, my intention is to make another video, uh, for us to make another video, going over the, all the different colors and the color therapy uh, modalities and options that are available out there, specifically when it comes to water therapy and how just with changing the, the color that goes into your water, how you're able to create all kinds of very profound effects. Healing, emotion release, uh, specific targeted to specific organs or um, specific uh, uh, emotions or traumas that the body may be carrying. And so I would highly suggest and recommend that you can get into different uh, color colors added to the water. Um, and so any type of way that you can add a color to the water, go for it. It can be colored light, it can be gels, it can be LED lights, it can be using fabrics to cover the cover them. There's many different ways. And that's, uh, that, that's a whole huge, beautiful topic amongst itself. And I fully see the future of medicine coming down to water and color therapy. It has such a profound potential that is yet to be fully explored and tapped into. So I'm excited, excited for the future of that. Uh, another really important thing is ultraviolet light, UV light. As I mentioned in the first part the video of what are you waiting for, the different filtration types that are out there, uh, UV filters, or ultraviolet, or using ultraviolet light. So that is the higher vibrational frequency of 
colored light that is beyond the visible spectrum of light. Um, that ultimately kills the life-giving ability of water. So anything that is living within the water ultimately dies. So that's bacteria or viruses whenever it's exposed to UV light. And so it's not actually killing the water or, what it, or killing the bacteria or the viruses, it's killing the life-giving capacity of water. This is when we know this in a pretty intimate way because most people in sunny areas or during sunny days will wear sunglasses, sunshades. And so that is protecting the, the ultraviolet light uh, from your eyes. And as we know, your eyes are one of the most water-laden organs in the body, consisting of about 93% water on your eyes uh, by, by weight. And so if the ultraviolet light is not good for our eyes, being mostly water, then it's obviously not good for the rest of your body. And this is why people wear sunscreen and it's not good to get sunburned and it's all because of the ultraviolet light. So uh, this holds true for the water outside of our bodies as well. Uh, it's really important uh, to get UV protection uh, into your water bottles. And so there's multiple ways of doing this uh, with those who are familiar with uh, medicinals and herbs and tinctures and preparations of that nature are familiar with using brown glass or UV glass or um, Mirian glass uh, is another name. Um, and so there's many different ways and types of glass out there which will naturally provide an ultraviolet protection from, from the, to the water. And so that's definitely worthwhile uh, seeking out. Uh, you can also use copper water bottles um, is another great way uh, to provide UV protection because the ultraviolet will not penetrate through the, the copper if you're using copper. Uh, copper is a metal which is really great with water. Uh, it has a lot of history going back to ancient Ayurveda in India as well as Chinese medicine and even the native peoples here in North America um, have a long and respected history using copper uh, vessels when it comes to water. So yeah, important to keep the ultraviolet light out of the water because you don't want to kill the life-giving capacity of our water. We want it to be at its highest vibrational, most life-giving capacity when we drink and consume and interact with our water. Uh, another beautiful way to structure the water is with the sunlight and moonlight. So if you're using your colored gels or your UV protection, um, it is highly beneficial to keep your water out in sunlight. Uh, it'd be best to add some, as I mentioned in the previous video, some Himalayan pink salt or Celtic sea salt or French green salt or black lava salt or any of these highly mineralized natural mineralized naturally occurring salts. You can add uh, just a little pinch of the salt uh, to your water along with some sodium bicarbonate, that's baking soda, your arm and hammer. Um, you can add both of those things and then let the water charge in the sun. Uh, the sun is um, representing the masculine energy, so it's providing positively charged energy to the water. So a great way of charging up your water to be able to have, it, have more energy is using the sunlight. Um, you can leave it out for as little as four hours and that'll that'll have a profound effect, but it's always be, it's recommended to have it be for a full 72 hour cycle. Um, this way you have during the sunlight hours, it's positively charging the water. And then during the nighttime when that moon comes out, the moon with its negatively charged representing the feminine aspect or the feminine energy, uh, the in principle is deleting the negative frequencies or the negative energy within the water. So the moon is removing the negative energy, the sun is adding positive energy to the water. And so with the balance between the sun and the moon, you're really having a really balanced light treatment to your water, removing the negative energies, positively charging it. Um, when you're blocking out the UV light, then you're having more of an influence of the infrared spectrum. And then if you're using a colored gel, you can experiment around with that or do some research and figure out which exactly is the color that would be most beneficial for you. <clears throat> and if there's ever any questions, please feel free to reach out in the chat and we'll, we'll keep going. 
Another beautiful way to create structured water is using uh, colloids, crystals, and gemstones. Uh, so uh, a colloidal solution is a solution that has very small parts per million or PPM. So a very small amount of, um, uh, of specific metals that are suspended in a solution to the point that they don't ever really come together and clump and congeal. So a colloidal suspension is a liquid suspension that will have some type of metal and uh, or mineral basis in it and it will stay in that liquid state without ever having any settling or without having any of that particulate matter uh, get stuck to the sides or the surfaces of whatever container it's being held in. So it is a uh, loose, uh, very diluted uh, solution of generally precious metals in a water solution. And so colloidal silver is probably the most famous. It's available at pretty much every single health store or drug store you can find. And so but just by adding a, uh, a touch of that or taking even colloidal silver or colloidal gold, uh, platinum, the uh, monoatomic gold, silver, platinum, uh, anything in the precious metals groups is really gonna be beneficial in keeping the structured water, the liquid crystalline matrix of your body intact. But then you can also add it to water and that'll start structuring the water as well. Uh, another great way is to use uh, minerals, and so uh, something like shilajit is uh, pretty potent, uh, as well as you know adding some um, some minerals that are going to be water uh, structure enhancing minerals. And there are quite a few of these uh, around. I'm trying to find a little spot here in a book which lists exactly which ones they are. Yep. So the most beneficial uh, ions or minerals to be adding to the water which uh, make and structure water are calcium, uh, lithium in very small quantities, sodium, zinc, iron, copper, gold, platinum, titanium, silver, and nickel. And so all of these are carrying an ionic or an electric charge, which provide the water and allow it to make more hexagonal structure. So make provides a more highly structured state to the water. Uh, whereas there are other minerals which will take away, and that is potassium, uh, rubidium, chloride, bromide, iodide, fluoride, and uh, the, the worst of them all is being aluminum. And so one of the big issues with aluminum cans and um, you know, both with food canning and drink canning is mostly made of aluminum is it's really destructuring all the water. And so the canned foods that you get uh, out of the can that's been sitting in that aluminum can is really taking away that life-giving energy within those foods. And so while it's so maybe you know not growing mold and not having bacteria growth in the food it's really taking it away uh, the life-giving nature of that food by destructuring the water within those foods or destructuring the water within those uh, cans so even the canned ciders and some of the canned fizzy drinks that people really love uh, to drink especially those seltzer waters which are pretty popular in the in, in aluminum cans are, are really having issues because the, the constant interaction with the aluminum is destructuring the water within within those cans. As well as the plastic. As well as plastic, yeah. And all of these, like chloride, fluoride, they're put in water. Yeah, they're put in water to destructure the water. Wow. And so uh, mineral structuring can work both ways. You can both add minerals which will add to the structure and create a more highly living, vibrant water, or you can add minerals which will take away. And uh, most mineral blends will contain, uh, or minerals that you'll find in the market will contain both minerals that are structure making minerals and destructuring minerals. Uh, but it, it's always important to make sure that when you're adding minerals, you're adding a greater percentage of minerals that are structure making than are destructuring. So as long as you're in the positive for structure making minerals, then you're good to go. Would you be able to go over what shilajit is as well? Uh, yeah, shilajit is an organic compound which is found primarily in caves um, and glacier regions of the planet. And so what glaciers will volcanic. do, or yeah, around volcanoes. 
So it's places where you have uh, uh, highly variable temperature changes, where organic material is being pressed through thousands and thousands of years uh, with pressure. And so that organic material, whether it's under a glacier or whether it's being pressurized by magma in, in, in the rock bed, um, the organic material will compound and break down and reform into a very sticky substance. Uh, it's generally black and it's very resinous, although it can also come in various other colors such as gray and white. Um, and it's containing high amounts of fulvic and humeric acid, uh, which are very rare earth uh, materials and uh, very important for cellular function as well. And so it's great, not only in, in, in terms of providing uh, the shoji, not only in terms of providing the fulvic and humic acid, but also providing a huge amount of uh, organic compounds, minerals, electrolytes, um, ionically charged uh, particles, and is really a, a very potent source of minerals, uh, the shoji. And it's one of, the, one of the ingredients that goes into our majestic mineral magic. Uh, which is available on a website, which is a great way to add minerals, uh, both as a supplement, but then also into your water to, you, to pr provide this aspect of structuring and remineralizing, which is so important uh, when it comes to water. So mineral restructuring, really important. Uh, a great way of, uh, of putting the puzzle pieces together and creating a really life-giving, uh, beautiful water. And there's many ways of adding minerals, um, and I would have to maybe make a whole nother video on what minerals are good, uh, which forms, which ionic uh, uh, forms of each of those minerals are the best. You know, is it best to have, uh, say for magnesium, is it best to have magnesium citrate or mag some other form of ionic uh, magnesium? And so, yeah, th 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 that's a whole other topic to pursue. But pressing forward, another great way is crystals. Crystals are containing 90% of uh, another form of water, which is called crystalline. Uh, crystalline is uh, another phase of water beyond the four that we've already covered and um, has a very strong response, to, uh, a different response to the Earth's gravity. But it's the crystalline, the form of water, which is what gives crystals their clear and organized um, repeating patterns within the crystals. And so crystals can be used in your water or you can build a crystal grid around whatever your sacred water vessel is. And uh, you can experiment with all different types of crystals, although um, the ones I would recommend starting off with would be shungite, uh, citrine, rose quartz, uh, clear quartz, uh, amethyst, moonstone. Moonstone. Uh, those are some great, some some really available ones that don't cost too much and uh, are really great to use with water and to to get started with. So there are some ways that you can put crystals in your water bottle and have it be permanently there. There are companies that make water bottles specifically with crystals in them or that allow you to add your own crystals that you can add to the water. And these crystals don't have to be in the water as long as they're close enough that their vibration hits the water. The water will pick up that vibration and become more crystalline. So the upsides uh, to a lot of this to using crystals and minerals and the gemstones is it does have a very profound effect on structured water, uh, structuring the water, but it does not make a complete solution to it. Um, it doesn't, because once you remove the crystals from the water, uh, it starts losing its structure pretty quickly after that. And uh, the minerals themselves aren't gonna completely structure the water. They're only kind of adding the, the foundation, but the rest of the house needs to be added somehow. And that's usually through vortexing or music or symbols or, uh, these floor pat uh, flow patterns and, um, and a, a variety of these other ways, which I'll uh, be going into here. So uh, nature performs endless state changes. So whenever water is going through a uh, phase change, 
that is uh, from solid into liquid. So when ice, glacier ice uh, or snow melts back into liquid water, that is a really beautiful way to drink water because when water is uh, frozen into ice, it becomes hexagonal. Almost all of the ice on the planet is uh, hexagonal structured honeycomb um, water. And so as that water melts out of, its, out of its hexagonal pattern, and it's been held there for quite some time, uh, it remembers that pattern and it re retains its structured exclusion zone liquid crystalline hexagonal shape whenever it comes into liquid. And so there are many places around on the planet where there are people drinking just this glacier melt water, and that's their only source of water. And they all have average life expectancies of well over 100 years in those areas. So areas in Siberia and in Russia and uh, some Inuit people uh, in the North Americas and people in uh, the Himalayan mountains in Pakistan and Nepal. Uh, people who are drinking this really beautiful glacier meltwater are having highly structured water that's also containing minerals and it has low levels of the shilajit already in, in the water. And so it's a, it's a really beautiful, beautiful way. So that going water, putting water through a phase change is another way to structure the water. So you can take nicely mineralized water, uh, keep it frozen uh, for over a week. And then when you melt that water again, um, that is some nicely structured water. Uh, whenever liquid goes into a gas, so it's going back into vapor, um, that is allowing the water uh, to, go, to go into a phase change. And then whenever you're bringing it back into liquid water, so that's water that's condensing, that is um, structured water again. And so this is why we see snowflakes when they fall out of the sky are always in that hexagonal crystalline exclusion zone structured water state, that beautiful six-sided symmetry uh, to the snowflakes, because that's when the vapor of the air is condensing in the cloud and then it's forming again as water. And so that's why we always see snowflakes with that six-sided symmetry, because it's, uh, it's structured water that's coming out of there. And whenever water goes through these phase changes into the exclusion zone, uh, fourth phase of water, plasma water state, um, into gas or from gas into exclusion zone or uh, liquid into exclusion zone or solid into liquid. These are all the phase changes and all of that is purifying the water. It's helping to reset the water's memory vibrationally and it's creating exclusion zone water. Is that the same for when it rains? Is, yes. Is the water that comes from when it rains also very structured? It is, yes. Okay, but because there's all these different frequencies, electric frequencies, then the water... Yeah, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of satellites constantly floating around the sky shooting electromagnetic signals so down, that's down the same for planet. snow, too. Yeah, and so this is having an effect on all of the rainwater that comes into our planet. It's becoming electromagnetically radiated water. And um, the reason that rainwater is good for plants that are being grown in soil is because the soil is containing the negative energy, the yin principle from Mother Earth. And that's combining with the positively charged rainwater that is coming from the atmosphere, which is positively charged. And so the positively charged water gets balanced with the negatively charged uh, ground or the soil that the plants are being grown in. And that's why plants love growing uh, with natural rainwater. Oh. But whenever you have rain catchment, so you're catching rainwater and you're storing that, it's only ever having the positive. And so unle unless you're a highly grounded person who's walking around barefoot all day or having uh, a good meditation and grounding practice, then we typically don't carry the same negative charge that the earth carries. And so when we drink just that positively charged rainwater, it's, it's A, it's not having the right mineralization, so it's not having the correct minerals because it hasn't had the chance to absorb minerals from the earth because there's not minerals up in, up in the atmosphere. Uh, so it's not containing the right minerals and then it's not having a balanced charge. So it's coming into our already overly positively charged uh, uh, human bodies with the, the positive charge from, from the atmosphere. And so that's not creating the most hydrating water. Uh, possible when we're drinking rainwater. Well, a lot of rain catching systems are in the desert, though, so it would be. 
pretty convenient. Yeah, definitely. And then there's ways to use that rain catchment water and remineralize it and then put it through a vortex or something. Um, you know, pray over that water, sing, sing to it and bring it back into an alignment and then it's certainly usable. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so another way to bring water back into alignment is to boil water for seven or more minutes. And this again goes back to ancient Chinese medicine and uh, Ayurveda and India. So when you're able to boil water for seven more minutes, the boiling of the water creates all these vortexes. Uh, it has air exchange where those uh, bubbles are forming. So it's constantly exchanging the hydrogen and oxygen within the water and the air. Uh, this is a process called burning. It's one of the anomalies of water is that it's constantly exchanging hydrogen and oxygen from the air with the water molecules. And so it's having this high turnover when you're boiling it. And then temperature is another uh, way of structuring water. So if you bring water down uh, in, into its ice state, uh, so going from a liquid into a solid, uh, it starts condensing until it hits four degrees um, Celsius or about 39 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it, then it starts expanding. And so that's another one of the anomalies of water is that the water expands as it gets closer to freezing after it reaches uh, below four degrees Celsius. And so temperature is another way uh, through boiling the water by bringing it into ice or if you can take water and super cool it, um, you can super cool water uh, past the freezing point and it will stay in its liquid state. Um, then that is another great way of structuring water too, is through just through the use of temperature. Why seven minutes? Uh, that's just the way ancient Ayurveda says it. Got it. And Chinese medicine agrees. So there's something to that. I don't know the exact scientific principles behind why seven minutes, but. If you boil it for longer, is it still okay as well? I mean, eventually it'll boil off, right? I and mean, all the water will turn into vapor and then you won't have any liquid water left. All right. But I think the seven minute mark is, it, from my understanding and what my intuition is telling, is that there's enough of, an, of a turnover within that boiling water that the water from the bottom comes to the top and mixes with air and then re reforms water and it's constantly doing this as it bubbles. Uh, so as long as it's at a rolling boil for over seven minutes, then it's getting almost all of the water uh, going through that process of burning and exchanging atmospheric hydrogen and oxygen with the water. Um, so another great way to create structured water is through the transmission of biological life energy. So this is as simple as taking your shoes off and being barefoot on the grass or in the sand or in the dirt or in the desert or where, wherever you may find yourself. So just earthing um, the water itself just by placing water in sand or on the earth will be able to pick up the yin principle, the negative ionic charge from the earth, and that helps to structure the water. Uh, another thing is just spending time with children. Children are uh, have way more or a greater percentage of not only water, but a greater percentage of uh, structured water in their bodies. And so as we age, the older and older we get, not only is the amount of water that we have in our body in terms of weight percentage of our body being less and less water, uh, it's also less and less structured water, uh, exclusion zone, hexagonally uh, organized water. Is that the same for animals? Yeah, and so that's why hanging out with your, your pet is so, is so grounding and so energizing and so relaxing and nurturing because Animals are not having the same type of ego that we have. They're not being caught up in the ifs and shoulds and could ofs and would haves and things that really tie us up as humans. And so they have a greater connection to this grounding earth, yin negative uh, ionic charge. And so hang, spending time with your pets, you know, your cat, your dog, your mouse, your ferret, your rat, your pet orangutan, whatever it may be, uh, was another great way. Um, going and hugging a tree. Trees uh, have this beautiful ability uh, to transmute the positive yang energy from the atmosphere and the yin feminine energy, uh, negative energy coming from the earth. 
And so they're a conduit uh, because they have the roots that go down in and then they have the branches that reach up into the sky. And so they have this beautiful way of exchanging and balancing that energy. And so just by going and spending time hugging a tree, it sounds pretty cliche and pretty hippie, but uh, it has scientifically proven to benefit uh, to benefit humans and to balancing the charges. It's, it's, been, it's scientifically proven to do that. So go hug a tree, spend some time with some kids, hang out with your pets, be barefoot uh, on the beach or in the grass or wherever you may find yourself. And this is uh, a really beautiful way of structuring the water in your body, but also keeping water structure that you wish to drink or consume or use in your cooking or bathing or whatever it is. Uh, the next one is been shown by uh, Dr. Konstantin Korlikov in Russia to have the strongest effect upon water structure as the human intent and emotions. So the emotions that we present to the water, the words that we use, the language that we use uh, that create up our thoughts and our thoughts create our reality, um, the, the how we pray to the water, how we sing to the water, this has the strongest effect upon water structure. Uh, there was an, a lake in Japan, which had become horribly overrun with heavy metal and industrial runoff from nearby factories. And the oxy dissolved oxygen levels in the water became so off that it was just became this algae bloom and all of the fish started dying and uh, the local government tried to do some cleanup projects with filtration and that just simply didn't work. And so what was happened is they, um, these Buddhist monks uh, came and organized uh, 3,000 participants to sing and pray over the water for it to be healed. And so they sang songs and they gave prayers and 3,000 people came collectively together to the lake and spent eight hours praying on the water. And within two weeks, uh, they came back and, and when they tested the water, the heavy metals and the imbalances and the, 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 the toxic pesticides that they had tested, the levels were almost back to normal. And so just through the power of intent, they made those disappear. Mm -hmm. you know, they didn't go anywhere, they just disappeared somehow. And it's specifically when people come together that's the strongest force. Yeah, we're, we're two or more of you are gathered. I'm there also, it says in, in the Bible, at least. And uh, So yeah, it's the power of collective prayer. I mean, we're, we're all uh, a spark of the, the one source consciousness or the, the initial, initial Big Bang vibration or however you want, wish to frame it or view it in, in, in your mind. And so wherever more of us come together, we bring more parts of a unified whole. It's similar to if you have a single twig, if you try to snap that twig in half, it'll break. If you bring two twigs together, it's a little harder. But if you bring 40 twigs together and you try to break all 40 twigs at once, you can't do it, it's too strong. Mm -hmm. And so there's this compounding effect when we bring our energies together. And that's not to say that the power of one individual isn't as powerful as the whole universe. I mean, can, it can be 100% that way. But yeah, there is, a, there, there is truth and a, a increase in magnitude when we come together and unify our thoughts, our voices, our vibrations. But even just the single person saying there and praying to the water or praying to the pond or praying to the lake or praying to the river or whatever water source you happen to be by, by the ocean, Wherever you are, when you sing, when you pray to the water, when you share your intentions, when you release your emotions, uh, that is the most powerful thing that we can do. And this branches off into so many different things. It goes into the type of, uh, the type of community that you live in, um, who your neighbors are, uh, the, the people that you sit next to at the restaurant when you're eating, if they're arguing, how that has an effect on the food and the water that in your body, uh, the type of uh, the type of friends you have, um, the diet that you have in terms of the movies that you watch, the TV shows you watch, the type of music you listen to, uh, the types of video content or images that you take in through your sacred eye portals. 
Um, all of these things have, have a huge amount to do with the structuring of the water in not only inside of your body, but also in the, the structure of the water of, that you wish to use for drinking and cooking and bathing and growing your food and feeding your children. So more on that later, uh, the human intent and emotion being the strongest and best way to structure water. Uh, the next one is hydrophobic and living foods. So all fruits and vegetables and fungi and bacteria and all these things are all made from structured water. So this is why eating an apple is gonna be more hydrating than drinking a bottle of water or a tap water because those are not living hexagonal exclusion zone structured water. Whereas all of the fruit, all of the water inside your fruit or all inside your vegetables and your avocado and your lettuce and your cherries. Especially when they're organic. Exactly. They're all contained of structured water. And not only that, but they have all these hydrophilic services. Hydro meaning water, philic meaning loving, philos. Um, so hydrophilic means that it loves water. And so all of the parts of these plants and fungi and fruits, uh, they're all containing these hydrophilic services as well as structured water. So not only is it giving you water in the biological format that your body already uses it in, which provides a energy savings uh, to you so the body doesn't have to break down the water and reform the water in order to use it in the cell. Um, it's also containing this hydrophilic services as water loving services, which help retain the structure of the water and help the body to retain the water that it needs as well which is increasing uh, hydration. So this is why it's so beneficial to go on juice fasts or eating you know, raw organic uh, plant-based diets um, because you're getting all of this hydrophilic and all of this structured water directly from the food that you eat. And so it is possible to stay fully hydrated simply by eating foods that are hydrating. And so one of the metrics that I, I've come up with uh, in order to determine if uh, you know a, a beneficial diet is is the food that I'm eating containing a greater than less than or equal to amount of hydration than than my body has. So when you eat, say chips, chips are chips having more or less water than in our body. Less. Less. Definitely less. And how about a cucumber? Is a cucumber having more water or less water than we have? Well, we have more water than any fruit. No, by, by percentage of weight. By percentage of weight? Yeah. I guess the cucumber? The cucumber. Has more water than a, me? At 94% by weight, it has more, has more water, more, more water by percentage than you. So just a, a one way to consider, uh, you know, eating food or approaching diet is, is this hydrating me or dehydrating me? And so that's a, been, been a very useful metric for, for creating a living, healthy food diet. Hydrate or dehydrate. Hydrate or dehydrate, that's it. <laughs> um, another great, or another way to structure water is through magnetic fields. Um, with the appropriate use of fields of magnets, you'll be able to vortex, uh, ionize, and change the water into a more visible spectrum. Um, so there's a lot of ways to, uh, there are a lot of technologies out there which use magnetic force in order to structure water. Uh, they, some of them can be very effective. However, the downsides of this is each place that you are, even within your own home or within your own city, or even within, you know, if you go into the forest and you start walking around the forest, every little individual area will have its own magnetic field and specific magnetic field. And so if you're using magnets to structure the water, you have to be in an area that you know that has a stable magnetic field. And then if you were to take that magnetic uh, structuring technology around, Every place that you move will have a different field, so it's slightly changing the magnetic field, meaning you're not getting a complete and full uh, magnetic structuring. The only way to do this is if you have the magnetic field housed inside of some type of metal, which is uh, blocking all outside uh, exterior electromagnetic fields, such as gold, uh, titanium, um, silver, uh, rhodium, uh, chrome, platinum, you know, these types of uh, precious metal groups, metals, will be able to insulate 
uh, from outside electromagnetic fields and allow the magnetics to work uh, internally in 100% efficiency. However, I've only seen a few of structuring technologies that use magnet magnets in this way in a shielded, fully magnetically shielded way. Um, another downside to the magnets though is after a while um, and exposure to other very magnetic fields, the magnets themselves lose uh, their charge and so they just stop working effectively after a while. Uh, so magnetic fields is another way of charging uh, uh, and creating structure in your water. Um, I would not recommend just taking magnets and putting it up to your water because that is an unstable magnetic field. Uh, you have to have a very aligned uh, magnetic field in order to do this. And uh, I can go more into that later in a different, in a different video as well. Just trying to give an overview of what creates structured water. Another great way is minerals, salt and baking soda, as I mentioned, you can add a mineralized salt um, and add you know, minerals that are being sold specifically to mineralize water and then take baking soda, uh, sodium bicarbonate, because uh, sodium bicarbonate is the best way to add alkalinity to the water. It's cheap, it's effective, and it is natural. Yeah, a completely natural way to do it. Uh, another great way to create structured water, and the one that we uh, are promoting, is technology. Uh, there are many, many different structured water technologies out there, and the plus side to structuring water technology is that there are uh, lots of lot, lots of uh, advantages because you don't you can use lots of volume of water at once and have it all be structured, which is very difficult to use with many of these other uh, forms uh, without the use of technology to, to do it all at once. Um, you can do it on the spot and uh, you can do it endlessly without having any parts to replace or things to repair. So that's uh, some of the ways to create structured water. There are some more, but I think that's what we have for time for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining and for listening in. It has been an honor to have this knowledge share. And we love you so much. Uh, we'll pick up next week with what are you waiting for part four the many benefits and uses and applications uh, for structured water today in terms of industry, in terms of cooking, in terms of health, in terms of improving the environment, uh, lots of things that can be improved and with the use and implementation of structured water. Thank you for joining us. It's an honor and blessing to share. We love you. We and we'll love you. see you next time in the next video.